Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. And guys, it has been way too long, so this truly does feel like a welcome back. Not just uh, for you guys back here at the channel, but for me uh, back here posting on the channel. Uh, and I do want to apologize for that. Right before the national championship, uh, about the day before I woke up, uh, was extremely sick, extremely high fever, um, found out that I had COVID. Again, if you remember a couple years ago, I had it. Uh, and somehow wasn't able to avoid it this time. So got COVID again and, and within the last few days really just started to feel better uh, strength-wise, voice-wise uh, to come back and start producing videos for you guys again. And it did kill me. Uh, it did kill me in the sense of that I was unable to come out here and, and produce content for you guys. You know, we had a whole slate of videos lined up. The National Championship recap, we were going to talk about the NFL playoffs. Uh, we were going to do, obviously, a season recap, which is what we're here to do today. Uh, we had a lot of content lined up, and it was really frustrating not being able to get that out for you guys. And So I do apologize for being gone for so long. I apologize for the lack of content. I apologize for no update. Uh, but if you or someone you know has had COVID, you know that it, uh, it can be rough. You know, I know people get it, and they handle it in different ways. But uh, if you get the worst side of it, uh, like I just got, uh, you know it can be... It can be rough and it can keep you down for a handful of weeks. And that's exactly uh, what I just went through. Uh, but guys, we're back. We're back though. So again, apologize for that. Don't worry about it anymore. We're healthy. We feel good. Uh, better than we have in a long time. Uh, and we're here with a 2021 season recap, which I know we're a little late on that. It's been a few weeks since the national championship ended and the college football season officially came to a close. Uh, but we're here to kind of recap how we did this year, touching on a few key points. And then we're going to be transitioning into 2022, getting ready for this upcoming season. Uh, because, guys, we have so much content uh, coming up for you guys to kind of help you get through this offseason. Uh, you know, we, we're going to touch on this. We're going to touch on the two NFL championship games coming up, the AFC championship, the NFC championship. Both of those will be coming out this week. Uh, one on Thursday, one on Friday. So we're going to touch on those. We've got the coaching carousel that we're going to talk about. We've got the transfer portal that we're going to talk about. We've got disappointing teams. We've got the surprising teams. We're going to do videos on both of those, kind of talking about uh, what happened in 2021. We've got March Madness when that comes around in March. We've got the Super Bowl. We've got the NFL Draft in, in April, which we'll be touching on these college prospects that we watched and enjoyed all throughout 2021 and in the years prior to that. So we've got a lot of content coming your way. In May, we'll do schedule previews. And then, you know, in June, we're right back to predictions. And the cycle starts all over again. And, of course, that's one of our favorite times of the year. So as always, guys, we really appreciate you staying with us uh, and supporting us and, and really just keeping this channel afloat. Uh, we say that quite a bit. We genuinely mean it. You guys are not only... Uh, some of the best fans uh, just for college football, period, but you're one of the best fans here on YouTube. And we cannot thank you guys enough. So we're back. We're really uh, looking to revamp it, really ready to get back into it, uh, and we're looking to engage with you guys once again. So let's take a look at the 2021 recap. First things first, you know, we, we knew when we came into this season uh, this was going to be a very special year, and the major reason was of COVID. You know, 2020 was not ideal. Uh, we get hit by COVID. The, the college football season as a whole was up in the air. We played it, but we had so many cancellations. We had all conference schedules, so we were eliminating non-conference games for most, most teams. It was not the ideal scenario. We didn't have fans in the stands. So we knew when 2021 rolled around, things were going to be different. Things were, for the most part, going to be back to normal. And that's what made this year, I think, so special. Uh, and, you be, and we all began to realize how special college football was and maybe that we even took it for granted at times, the ability to go tailgate, the ability to go to the game, uh, the atmospheres uh, that we get to see, whether you're in person or just watching from home on TV, uh, how special that atmosphere and those traditions are. So that seeing all that being back, I can remember watching, uh, it was I think it was North Carolina and Virginia Tech in week one, uh, seeing... Uh, Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, uh, not even at night, kind of still sunny, but seeing all those fans packed in there, uh, the inner Sandman being played, and all the fans getting just hyped up, and just seeing and hearing that crowd, you know, it brought a tear to my eye, genuinely, because I knew that the college football not only was back for the year, but college football as we have grown to know and love it was back. And that's why 2021 was so special. But you, you, you take that out of the equation, you take out the COVID factor, and you actually look at how the teams played. I genuinely think, guys, this was the wildest season, the most fun, the wildest season since 2007, which, of course, is what many believe to be the best year of college football ever. You know, 2007 was full of twists and turns and 
I feel like 2021 was better than that. Uh, we'll look from the from the examples of multiple areas. First off, two new teams made the college football playoff. You know, everybody is complaining and worried about parity in college football. And when we entered 2021, everybody expected the same old teams: Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State. And who would that fourth team be? Would it be Georgia? Would it be Oklahoma? You know, we weren't seeing much parity. Some would say. Well, this year we get Michigan in the college football playoff instead of Ohio State, and then Cincinnati getting that fourth spot, becoming the first ever group of five team to make the college football playoff. So an unbelievable feat by the Bearcats and Luke Fickle. So half of your playoff was brand new teams, two teams that had never made the playoff before in Michigan and Cincinnati. And yes, both of those teams lost by double digits to Alabama and Georgia, but it was still nice to see some, some new blood in there, some new teams in there. Uh, and then on top of that, you go to the national championship between Alabama and Georgia, and Georgia took down the Crimson Tide, finally got over the hump. You know, they couldn't beat them in the SEC championship this year and the last time they played in the SEC championship. They couldn't beat them in the regular season back in 2020. Uh, they couldn't beat them in the national championship a few years back. But they finally got over the hump in the fourth quarter behind the heroics of Stetson Bennett and their phenomenal defense to win their first national championship since 1980. So, you know, we didn't get to put out a national championship recap. We didn't get to praise Georgia uh, like we wanted to. But for you Georgia fans out there, congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs. Congratulations because that truly was an unbelievable performance in the national championship. Well, that game was close all the way till the end before that pick six that really sealed it. Uh, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal performance and their ability to shut down Alabama time and time again in the red zone, holding them to field goals, three and not six. They end up being the difference maker. They end up being the game changer. And Georgia guys, once again, is going to be a force to be reckoned with in 2022. As long as Kirby Smart is there, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with uh, and very well could be one of the national championship favorites again going into this next season. So again, congratulations to Georgia, not only winning their first national title since 1980, but providing some sort of, again, parity, again, to college football. And that's what many people were saying before that national championship. If you want Alabama to win, you know, that's fine. But if you wanted some sort of parity, if you want to see something different, uh, if you want to see maybe the landscape of college football possibly change for the future, you need to root for Georgia. Uh, and and you, you guys debate that however you want, but Georgia did get the job done. We do want to con congratulate them for that. Another thing we want to talk about, you know, how crazy this season was. Listen to these numbers here. You know, one, th one of the things that we like to talk about in our, in our weekly recaps is ranked teams going down. You know, oh, this team went down. Uh, you know, eight ranked teams went down. Four of those to unranked opponents, however we want to say it, right? This year we saw 100, it perfectly lined up, 100 ranked teams lost, and that does include conference championships and bowl games. 100 ranked teams lost. 50 of those ranked teams, 50 of them lost to unranked opponents. Exactly half of the ranked teams that went down this year fell to unranked opponents. Some of those bigger upsets than others. Uh, you look at a team like Purdue, the giant killers, who took down not just Iowa at Kinnick, who was number two in the country, but then later took down number three, Michigan State. Huge, huge year for Jeff Brown and the Boilermakers, who won their bowl game over Tennessee, albeit in a uh, controversial fashion. You look at Texas A&M, who had a not very good start to the season, but somehow managed to pull off maybe one of the bigger upsets of the year over then number one Alabama in College Station. You know, and the list goes on and on. We mentioned that Virginia Tech-North Carolina game. The Tar Heels had sky-high expectations. Loss of Virginia Tech in the season opener. The Tar Heels ultimately losing their bowl game to South Carolina in a year that was majorly disappointing for Mac Brown and his squad. And the list goes again on and on and on. But 50, one half of the ranked teams that lost in college football this year fell to unranked opponents. And you find me another year where that happened. You know, that's why I, I, I will sit here and tell you that I think this year was better than 2007 because we genuinely did not know you know that phrase, any given Saturday, assume nothing, right? We did not know. Every Saturday we woke up to watch football, we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, sometimes in years past, we would. There's no way this team's going to win. No way it's going to happen. But you have to play the game. And this year was one of those years where I woke up on a Saturday and I genuinely didn't know. Even in those ranked versus ranked uh, games, you know, it could be a top 10 game, top 15 game. You know, you feel like you're leaning one way or another. There were sometimes I didn't even know. Sometimes where you were like, I could totally see this team winning, I, but, you know, wouldn't be surprised. If the other team won, right? We're here to do predictions, though. We're always going to predict. We're going to give you a winner. But this is a year that was wildly unpredictable. And for me, that's it's why it's funny that when you look at our numbers, we had our best season yet.
So maybe we need a little chaos in college football for us to do better than ever at the Gridiron Expert. This was our fifth year doing this, guys. Fifth year bringing you predictions. Fifth year bringing spread picks. 416 and 92 on the money line. 416 and 92 straight up. Keep in mind, guys, the majority of those numbers, majority of those wins were all predicted back in the summer. Those were all predicted back in the summer when we do those game-by-game -game predictions for every single team like we always promise you. 81.9%. 82 if you want to round up. Couldn't have asked for a better year. Our best stat yet at the Gridiron Expert. Bringing our overall, guys, five-year total. 1835, 1,835 wins, 531 losses, but a 77.6% winning percentage. So we always said we want to hit about 76, 77, and we are a little bit above that mark. Couldn't ask for anything better. For a five-year trend, couldn't ask for anything better. Against the spread, our best year yet. So if you signed up for our expert picks on our website, you benefited this year, and you benefited in a big way. 104 and 78. 57.1% against the spread. Every year we say we are better than over 80% of the national analysts. Those numbers, guys, are not made up. We're beating the guys at ESPN. We're beating the guys at CBS. We're beating the guys at Fox. If you come to the Gridiron Expert, we guarantee you'll win. Total here, 306, 242, and 1, 55.8%. If you were consistently hitting 55% or better against the spread, you're doing a pretty dang good job. And we, again, are about a whole percentage point above that, and that's not going to change. It's not going to change in 22, not going to change in 23. So if you sign up for expert picks, guys, you benefit big. You benefit big. We'll hype that up closer to time. We'll hype that up later on in 2022. But again, this is where you need to come for reliable spread picks, for analysis on the website, and for winners. Because you will win. Never had a season below 500. We're never going to have a season below 500. 57.1%. 61.4% in bowl games this year. 25 and 14 against the spread in the bowl games this year alone. Couldn't ask for anything better. And we hope you guys that have signed up for us uh, would agree with that. And hope you've been able to take advantage of these picks this year. So again, guys, it's been one heck of a year for as unpredictable as college football was. It's been one heck of a year for us here at the channel. Uh, with the predictions that we're putting out for you guys, whether it's straight up in our weekly predictions or against the spread that can only be accessed on our website. Two things left that we want to talk about. We talked about the coaching carousel. We talked about the transfer portal. Both those things made the end of 2021 and the beginning of this 2022, the beginning of this new year, so exciting. Because, guys, you know, we're shaping up for, you know, we just said 2021, we feel it's the best since 2007. That's how we feel, right? We're shaping up for what could be another historic college football season in 2022. Some of the bigger programs in the country under new management. Lincoln Riley going out to USC. Brian Kelly going to LSU. Brent Venables to Oklahoma. Marcus Freeman taking over at Notre Dame. So many big time programs dealing with brand new coaches. Whether they succeed tremendously in year one or whether it takes time, that remains to be seen. But you're not only going to see so many changes in management, so many new coaches at big-time programs, but you're seeing the transfer portal become a bigger role and playing a bigger role in college football than we've ever seen. Transfer portal, not just with these you know, two stars that weren't getting playing time. We're seeing four stars, five stars. We're seeing starters from national championship winning teams transferring to the team they beat in the national championship. And I think you Georgia and Bama fans know who I'm talking about. But we're seeing players that are starters leaving for other programs, sometimes within the same conference. The transfer portal and obviously the NIL playing a major role in this as well. But all of that is transforming the college football landscape before our very eyes, which is not only uh, going to be huge for 2022, but it's going to be huge for the years going forward. Uh, so, so much is changing in college football, guys. So much is changing, and we're going to be breaking it down over these next few months, kind of getting you ready, trying to fill you in on what you need to know for that. Uh, but get ready for what should be another exciting college football season that, yes, I know we're about eight months away from, uh, but it will be here before you know it. Alabama and Georgia will be the favorites. So they'll be at the top, and then after that, who else? Does Ohio State bounce back? Does Clemson bounce back? How does Oregon and USC do? How do they do out in the Pac-12? Who's going to be the top group of five team? Will it be Cincinnati again? Bearcats lose a lot. Will it be a team like Houston? Could it be someone from the Sun Belt? We don't know. College football, genuinely unpredictable, just like we saw in 2021, and I would expect the same in 2022. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Again, we are so, so happy to be back. Finally beat COVID for the second time. The second time we were able to take down COVID, praying for no more, hoping that does not happen to any of you guys as well. Uh, but again, we are so happy that you've stayed with us. Uh, 
kind of hung with us over these last few weeks. We've put out no content at all, which is never ideal, uh, but it's not going to happen again. We've got the AFC Championship prediction coming out tomorrow, NFC Championship on Friday, and then tons of content coming your way at the beginning of next week, and that's going to carry us through for the rest of January, and obviously really throughout the rest of this offseason. So stay tuned for that, guys. Stay tuned, and continue to like, comment, subscribe to us here, because the channel is only going to get bigger and better because of you. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.